is almost over. The brand new version of Travail Kitchen and Amusements in downtown Robbinsdale is almost fully open. You can choose from going downstairs and having a cocktailing and a la carte food experience to paying a $15 ticket to see a band that's going to play on the rooftop during the summer, you know. It's uh, 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 just be a wide range of different experiences that we're going to try to provide here. Travail's brand new restaurant along West Broadway is set to open March 17th. When the new building officially opens, it will have three floors, each offering a different experience. The main level will feature Travail's signature tasting experience. The rooftop will offer scenic views while customers dine on Travail's greatest hits from the last decade. And the basement bar is where people can enjoy signature cocktails and order from the a la carte menu. That space opened two weeks ago. Between our food and our hospitality and our service, I think that um, you know that that's the the key to our success is trying to create a good balance there that really connects with people. People can order ticketed reservations on the first of every month, but walk-in customers who want to dine a la carte are always welcomed. March is Women's History Month. We'll kick off the month with sharing the story of a student at Hennepin Tech who is making, making a little history of her own. She's pursuing a career in a male-dominated field. We get that story from Eric Nelson. Jessica is rare, and she's one of the best students in her cabinetry class. Jessica Neubauer has a knack for building and fixing. It all started when she was a young girl. My dad was in the garage fixing a car. I was out there following him around. Jessica is the only female in her cabinet making class at Hennepin Tech. I mean, who doesn't like power tools? <laughs> I love power tools. She has powered her way to the top of a male-dominated class. Jessica is a trailblazer. We're proud of her. Uh, she has a lot of confidence and she's pursuing her passion. I love it. Being a woman in cabinet making <laughs> means being on an island with mostly guys. That doesn't bother me. But Jessica isn't phased by that. There's no limits. If you want to go build houses, go build houses. If you want to work on cars, work on cars. You know, there's nothing that should stop you. Times are changing and employers are embracing diversity and inclusion. After a 20 year career in the desktop publishing business, Jessica wanted out. No more computer work. So she made a career pivot and began taking night classes at Hennepin Tech in January of 2019. I like being self-sufficient. Working with wood is a woulda, coulda, shoulda gamble that has paid off. It's a lot more satisfying building something with your hands and doing something with your hands and sitting behind a computer screen. You know, I did that for 20 years and eh, kind of done with technology. Fortunately for Jessica, Hennepin Tech has been the perfect landing spot. The school welcomes everyone. And that's our message. We don't want anyone to feel like there's some artificial reason why they can't enter a job, a career that they love. In Brooklyn Park, I'm Eric Nelson, CCX News. More students are turning to robotics as their extracurricular activity of choice as programs now routinely engage students in middle and elementary schools. Reporter Shannon Sletton shares the story of one team called the Iron Gears who hit their stride this year. On an average afternoon in the basement of Ryan Graham's Maple Grove home, a group of guys gather to do much more than just hang out. Being able to come here just after school every single day to work on robotics is a lot of fun, especially when you're doing it with your um, best friends. This group of guys is a team called the Iron Gears, and they are the senior most team in the Northwest Metro Robotics Club. Our team makes up of a lot of different students from a lot of different schools. Um, and because of that, we just created our own team. Ryan's mom, Cheryl, is the coach. I pretty much live robotics almost as much as they do, not quite. She helps them prepare for competitions, but says the team is self-motivated. Each team member has a role. I mean, I think of it as kind of an orchestra where they all just, every role is so critical and so important. There's a programmer, that's Cooper. This year has been the most difficult year, I would say because we have these new wheels that I haven't worked with before. Jackson, the business manager, also shared with us the notebook, which outlines everything about the team and the robot. 3D printing to our code, to all of our volunteering over there, and some of the professionals we've met with. So this is a way to tell the judges what we've done this year and why we 
have done it the way we did. In previous years, the team noticed the notebook was a weak spot in competition, so they brought in Weston to help expand it. This one has our engineering design process, additive manufacturing, subtractive manufacturing, product drawings, how to build our robot, and the control and code section. Their work paid off. The team won their first state competition this year. And now... It's a week of robot heaven for us. They are headed to a world competition in Detroit. We're not building a brand new robot. We're changing pretty much everything about our old state robot. The Iron Gears couldn't be more excited about their trip to world competition. But before that, you'll find them here with their robot getting ready. It's going to be hard to beat this year. I think. In Maple Grove, Shannon Slatten, CCX News. A group of high school students from around the Northwest Metro got a chance to see what their future careers might look like. The kids were on a tour at Proto Labs in Brooklyn Park, taking part in a program put on by Hennepin Technical College. The company specializes in producing prototypes for clients ranging from med tech to aerospace. Proto Labs employees say tours like this are worth it. It is very important because, um, you know, we of course need employees, but more importantly, we just we just want people to um, grow and help out the space and help our overall economy um, and state grow. So it's uh, we're in this for the, the the whole the whole environment, not just for us. Peterson hopes students come away from the tour with the idea that a career in manufacturing can be fun and challenging. Three local teams played in section finals in boys hockey this week. In section 5AA, familiar foes met as Maple Grove was aiming for its third ever trip to state when they met the Blaine Bengals for a third time this season in the section 5AA final. Scoreless late in the first, Maple Grove gets a power play. Henry Nelson looks off the defender and fires the shot in for a 1-0 lead. Early in the second, Crimson freshman Landon Gunderson threads it to Joshua Giuliani and he tips it in for a 2-0 lead. In the third, Blaine on a rush, but Jack Winicky is in great position and he makes the stop here. Blaine's Finn Loftus walks out of the corner and gets to the net, but Winicky stops this one as well. Then a two on one rush for the Crimson. Sam Jacobs to Chris Kernan and he buries it top corner for a three to nothing lead. And they do a great job blocking shots and denying Blaine the middle of the ice. The Bengals put 45 shots on net, but Winicky stops everything for a shutout. Maple Grove is the Section 5 AA champion with a 3 to nothing victory. They kept him to the outside. I can make saves from out there, so it really helped me really get into the game and get my hands going, so yeah. We wrote on the board unfinished business 365 days ago, and, uh, um, it, and the kids wanted this more than anything, and Jack uh, came into our locker yesterday and you could see how bad he wanted it and uh, uh, I'll tell you he had a phenomenal game tonight and uh, he's a, a big part of why we're here right now. Armstrong Cooper is in its first season in Class A. After beating the number one seed in Section 2, Orono, in the semifinals, the Wings look to become the first team from the Robbinsdale District to make it to the State Boys Hockey Tournament since Robbinsdale in 1959. The Wings facing Delano in the Section 2A final. The Tigers strike first. Gunnar Paulson in the slot puts it away just under five minutes into the game. Less than five minutes later, Mike Weber picks up a loose puck at center ice and he goes in to score. Things looking good for Delano as they lead it two to nothing after the opening period. But Armstrong Cooper plays very well the rest of the way. Jack Campion to Noah Wiesjohn for a goal in the second and it's a two to one game. Then in the third, Wiesjohn carries it up the left side and he sets up Ben Anderson for a nice goal. The Wings excited as they tie this one at two to two. It stays that way through regulation and we go to OT. In the first overtime, AC nearly ends it, but the shot goes off the pipe, a near miss, and we go to a second overtime. And Delano wins it. Adam Brown steals the puck and he sets up Jesse Peterson and he scores on a great wrist shot. Armstrong Cooper plays well, but it ends in a heartbreaking 3-2 loss in double OT. Benilde also lost in overtime in the 6AA final.
Knowing the best way to hook grubs for catching winter panfish can make a difference in your success while out fishing. Here's Terry Tuma with this week's CCX Ice Fishing Tip. Not to hook your larvae, wigglers, whatever you want to title that grub, is you'll see, if you put it in your hand, you'll see a sort of a bevel in with two little black specks. Then take your sharp hook and just hook it, sort of nick that a grub just in the skin, because you do not want to tear it. Same thing with the wax worm, you do not want to tear it. If you tear it, all those natural juices, that scent flows out immediately. And if you hook them correctly, that ear larvae, that wiggler will still con constantly move. And then to try to, you know, try to take care of your bait in the fish house, very, very important. The other two is that when you're using these, kind, don't be afraid to experiment. You have you noticed I've had uh, two different colors of, of spikes. One is white, one is red, and there's going to be time frames when the white one works better than the red one works better. There's going to be time frames when a wax worm is better, more productive than the other, uh, than the other two. So here again, do some experimenting, and many times it'll change from lake to lake and also from hour to hour. So be open-minded, experiment, experiment, experiment. Thanks, Terry. Terry's final tip of the winter season airs later this coming week here on CCX Sports.